And then I remember leaving my body and being pulled upwards through this white light. It was this white, shimmering, glimmering light. And when I finally got up through the light, I entered into what felt like sunshine heaven, sunrise heaven. It was all yellow, golden, orange light. And it felt so warm and welcoming and loving. And suddenly I wasn't alone anymore because I looked around and there were so many other beings there. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. I am doing so well today, and for no reason other than the fact that I moved my body this morning, it is sunny outside, there are blue skies, birds chirping, little cotton ball clouds in the sky, And I think most importantly, right before setting down to record this, I was listening to a bunch of fun 60s and 70s music. Sometimes being happy and joyful is, dare I say it, easy? (laughs) And I wanted to start this sharing that with you because we talk a lot about joy and happiness in this podcast. And I just wanted to share that it's not always this heavy thing that takes a lot of self-reflection and habit change. Sometimes it's as simple as getting outside or moving your body, taking a couple breaths of fresh air, listening to some old disco music that makes you want to dance. I was listening to these two songs that I am absolutely obsessed with. So if there's nothing else you take away from today's episode, I hope you go and listen to these songs. One is called the Oogum Boogum Song. It is absolutely incredible. And the other is called Pennies from Heaven. Those two will make you smile, giggle, dance. And I want you to embrace it. I want you to dance. I want you to giggle. I want you to do whatever those songs make you want to do. So with that as our very unexpected introduction... Hello. (laughs) I hope you're doing really well too. If you're not, fear not. That day will pass. We've all been there. I was there probably a handful of days ago. And then tomorrow you might have the kind of day I'm having today. And that is this beautiful, magical journey that we call life. So welcome to today's episode. I have so much in store for today's episode because yesterday I attended a past life regression. It was so powerful, and the more that I have processed it, the more I have taken from the experience, and that is why I'm sitting down to share it with you today. There's a lot of background to share with you, some other stories to explain before I get into my personal experience of the past life regression yesterday, but before we dive into all of that fun, seemingly woo-woo, but highly powerful information, I want to invite us to breathe together, as always. I want us to take some really simple breaths today. I'm feeling like breathing in through the nose and then just sighing out of the mouth. And I want to invite all of us, myself included, that when you sigh out of your mouth, can you actually make some sound? 
when you actually make sound, it helps to reawaken your voice, that throat chakra, bring some more energy and life to sharing your voice with the world. So many of us feel uncomfortable making sounds, whether we're in public or even if you're listening to this alone, you might feel kind of weird sighing or groaning. But I want to invite you to do exactly that. Do what makes you feel a little uncomfortable and let that voice roar. That is why we are here. We are all here to share our voice, our most authentic expression of ourselves. So let us begin that by simply starting with the breath. So if you'd like to close your eyes, as always, I invite you to do so. Go ahead and get comfortable if that is the option you're choosing today. And before we take our breaths, I want you to just take a few gentle movements that you feel like you could use today. So maybe that means you rock and roll your head from side to side. You take some gentle neck rolls. Maybe it means you shrug your shoulders up to your ear with an inhale and then shrug them down your back with an exhale. Maybe it means like moving your pelvis in a circle, doing something a little weird, doing something to move that energy. Maybe it means raising your arms up to the sky, giving yourself a big good morning stretch, and then bringing your arms back down. So taking whatever you need for just one more moment. And then when you're ready, I want you to go ahead and empty out from your previous breath here. And then go ahead and inhale fully through the nose, filling up the lungs all the way. And sigh it out with sound. Oh, beautiful. Two more. Inhale through the nose. Sigh it out a little louder. Oh. <laughs> and third one. Inhale through the nose. And let it go. <sighs> gorgeous breathing in and out through the nose normally and fluttering open your eyes if you got the chance to close them ah uh, that felt really nice I think it's really fun and liberating and freeing to actually make sound I don't know why we think it's so weird it's like the second you're even in a yoga class and your teacher says okay make some sound with this exhale everyone feels like they're back in seventh grade and if they make a sound, they're going to have cooties or something. It's ridiculous. We need to get over it. We need to feel safe and secure in expressing our voice and also expressing our physical needs. Sometimes your physical need just means sighing it the freak out. So with all of that behind us, it's time to dive into some really fun information. I can't even express how grateful I am to have this community, this platform to discuss topics like this. A theme in my life recently that I've been pondering quite a bit is that I don't have many people in my life that I can be fully, authentically woo-woo and free with. Yes, I do have some really solid people in my life that will hear me out no matter what I'm into at any point in time, but more or less in this world, it is hard to connect with people that think I'm crazy. <laughs> and not that people think I'm crazy, but there are certain groups of people that if you mention past lives or tarot cards or astrology, they're like, oh, okay, I see who you are. I see what you're into. So I feel truly grateful from the bottom of my heart that I have you all in this community with me listening to this or watching this. I can feel your hearts beating as I sit here. I am just so happy that I don't have to be alone in this anymore. So thank you for being here and thank you for being open to all of the different facets of this magical world and not closing yourself off to the possibilities of what could be out there. So speaking of possibilities of what could be out there, I want us to talk a little bit about reincarnation and past lives. If this is the first time that you have encountered this topic, welcome 
and you're safe here. If this is a topic that you yourself have thought about, studied, read about, whatever for a handful of years, also welcome. You're safe here as well. I personally stumbled upon this concept of reincarnation and past lives back in 2018. Granted, I had heard all about reincarnation for years. I mean, many Asian philosophies and religions do indeed believe in reincarnation, but having hailed from more of a Western culture and religion upbringing myself, I honestly didn't think that much about reincarnation. It didn't really, it wasn't something of interest to me until I was introduced to a book that changed my life forever. If you are a new listener, this might be the first time you're hearing about this book. If you are someone who listens to this podcast religiously, you know that I have mentioned this book already. The book is Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss. Many Lives, Many Masters was recommended to me back in 2018, actually by a spiritual teacher of mine, a Jewish spiritual teacher of mine, Sara. And I can't even explain the impact that this book had on my life and my perception of the universe. In the book, for a short synopsis, if this is the first time that you've heard about this book or this author, so Brian Weiss is actually a an Ivy League trained psychiatrist and psychotherapist. He had a private practice for decades and decades, had treated thousands of clients from all sorts of sides of the mental wellness, mental health spectrum. And then one day he had this client named Catherine walk in and Catherine presented with many of the same symptoms and troubles that a lot of his other clients faced. Lots of intense phobias that were debilitating in her personal life. She had severe depression, anxiety, you name it. She was deeply struggling. And she had tried so many different forms of therapy, different modalities. And she finally came to Brian Weiss because he was highly regarded. Brian begins to work with her using the hypnotherapy that he uses on all of his clients. And I want to stop right here. If you hear the word hypnotherapy and you're picturing a magician on a stage who is bringing up an audience member, quote unquote, hypnotizing her and telling her to cluck like a chicken and then she proceeds to do it. I want to say right now, that's not hypnotherapy. (laughs) That is a magic trick. That is simply for fun and entertainment. Hypnotherapy is simply bringing one's body and mind into such a deeply relaxed trance-like state that you can actually access the subconscious mind, which is typically blocked or overridden by the conscious waking mind. So when someone goes into a meditation, they reach brainwave states where they can access their subconscious thoughts. And that's exactly what hypnotherapy is. So if you think of hypnotherapy as me holding a pendulum, letting the pendulum swing and saying, you are getting sleepy, that's not quite it. (laughs) Hypnotherapy more or less is just a really deep meditation where you can access things that have been hidden or locked away. So anyway, in this book, Dr. Brian Weiss proceeds to use hypnotherapy on Catherine. And as with all of his patients, he regresses her back into childhood to try to go to the source of her wounds, her phobias, her fears, her anxieties. And when he says, I want you to go back to the time of the source of your troubles, she proceeded to explain a lifetime that was nothing like the one that she's living now. She proceeded to explain a lifetime from centuries and centuries ago. She had different colored hair. She was simply a different person, different time period, different country, different culture, different ethnicity and religion. And she could explain everything perfectly to a T. She could even read signs on buildings I mean, every single detail was coming through. He had no idea what was going on. He didn't know that this was necessarily a past life, but he kept going with it, asking her questions. And through his sessions with her, he began began to realize 
that she was regressing back to past lifetimes, that these lifetimes were not the ones that she was living currently as Catherine. And anyway, working with Catherine forever changed his life. And not only that, but his work with her changed her life. Even though she had tried every kind of therapy and modality out there, by the time that she had done enough of these past life regression sessions, this hypnotherapy with Dr. Brian Weiss, all of her troubles were gone. She was able to go back to the source of some of these phobias, these fears, these debilitating anxieties. And as soon as she found the source, realized that was from another lifetime, she doesn't have to cling to it anymore. She doesn't need to feel that fear. She was able to release it from her subconscious mind and from her body that holds on to everything we've ever endured. And she became an entirely different version of herself as Catherine. She became a happier version, a freer version, one that wasn't debilitated by mental health issues anymore. And Dr. Brian Weiss continued to use his hypnotherapy and his past life regressions on thousands more clients. He's written a bunch of books. I highly recommend them. Another one that I love is called Only Love is Real that I've also talked about. And it explores the concept of soulmates through the idea of reincarnation. And in that book, short synopsis, he ends up working with these two clients that have never met one another. They're strangers to one another. And through the sessions of past life regression, he starts noticing that their stories, when they regress to a certain lifetime, seem to overlap. And it's almost as if they're characters in one another's lives. In fact, one of them was the father and one was the daughter in this ancient lifetime. The only visual I can remember is that this father was being dragged away by a carriage and the daughter was running after him, screaming, crying, wanting her father back. And they both had that traumatic memory, although one of them could remember it as this father being dragged by a carriage, his skin rubbing against the the gravel and the dirt and crying out for his daughter. And the other patient could remember the exact scenario as the daughter screaming after her father. So anyway... These clients didn't know one another existed and maybe a few months or years into their work with Brian, they ended up meeting in the waiting room one time and they instantly fell in love and got married. And so Brian talks about maybe this concept of soulmates isn't incorrect after all. So using that as context, I just wanted to share that as my personal turning point in how I look at life after death. And no matter how you look at life after death, I just ask that you remain open as I explain my experience. I have found that hearing these stories alone can be incredibly healing and they can start to open up our hearts and minds to the idea that maybe it's not one and done. Maybe we've lived lifetimes here before And for better or worse, we take some of that with us into this lifetime. So there might be things from your past lifetimes that it's time to release. And other things, certain types of strength, characteristics you can tap into that you have honed in past lifetimes that it's time to kind of bring back into this current lifetime. So for me personally, after I read that book, and of course it changed my life, I proceeded to gift it to all of my family members and friends, and I could not wait to get a past life regression. So maybe a year went by and I asked either for my birthday or Christmas, Hanukkah, something for a past life regression with this practitioner that I had seen for Reiki for many, many years. So I went to this regression and it was exactly as it was explained in the book. I got on her Reiki table. She deeply relaxed me through a guided meditation and then it became this visualization meditation where I was guided to open a door and see a past lifetime. I believe with that one I might have been guided by sitting on a cloud and I believe she had me move the cloud to a past lifetime if I remember correctly. That was about four or so years ago and I did indeed see a lifetime In fact, in that lifetime, I, it was so weird, you guys, the second she 
she guided me off of that cloud in the sky and I could first start to see the environment around me. I remember it was very sandy. I felt like I was kind of in a desert and she was just asking me questions. Where are you? What does it look like? And I just knew, I said, I'm in Egypt and I don't know why I knew that. And I had kind of the time period in my mind. I couldn't find my notes of that session before this recording, unfortunately. So I can't remember the time period, but it was a long time ago. And I was in Egypt as this young woman. I remember having this long black hair and I would go from my home in the village down to the river with this jug and I would collect water and bring it back to the village. And that's the gist of what I remember. It was a very simple, slow, mundane life. And I was then guided to see my my death scene. And I was actually quite calm. I was surrounded by some friends, family members, people from the community. And then I died peacefully at an old age. And I remember at the time, I was almost disappointed that it was such a simple life. I had heard so many podcasts of people share their regression stories. And it was things like, oh, you know, I was burned at the stake as a witch. And it makes sense because I'm such a spiritual person now and I'm so witchy. Or some people had some sort of... Uh, throat chakra blockage. When I say that, I mean they really struggled to share their voice, to to express themselves fully. And it turns out that they had been hung or beheaded or something to do with the neck and the throat where they had been drowned, suffocated. And so there were these really traumatic stories people would share. But I was almost jealous because I felt like, wow, if you can see some sort of lifetime like that, Maybe it helps you get clear on those limiting beliefs, those phobias, those fears that you have in this lifetime and you can start to clear it up. But as I was told at that regression, your subconscious will only reveal what you are ready to see or what you need to see at that point in time. You know, there's a reason that we can't all remember our past lives Because A, we don't need to to live our day-to-day lives. And B, that would be really confusing and highly overwhelming. (laughs) Because a lot of the people in our lives in this lifetime have been in past lifetimes. And it would be confusing to have the baggage of our relationships with them in past lifetimes. In this one, it would just be hard to live a normal life with that many centuries and centuries of memories. So I do believe that there's a reason that we can't remember, but I also know it is highly healing and heart opening and mind opening to look back at those lives when you feel ready. And your subconscious mind who always wants to keep you safe and protected will only reveal what you are ready to see and what you need to see. So I had seen this deeply simple life And I had received the question from the practitioner at the end of that life of, you know, what did you learn from that life? What was the message and why did you see that life today? And I remember the message was that living a simple life is not a bad thing. From the time I was a kid, and I know this is probably true of many of us, but I know from a few people in my life, it's not true of all of us, that I have always wanted to live a really big life. I mean, living a small life, a mundane life, a life that in some way is not super exceptional, maybe it's average or just normal, that scares the bejesus out of me. I mean, truly from the time I was a kid, when I would be asked, what is your greatest fear in life? It was always to live a small life or to be average. It scares me to my core. And so my message in seeing that life was you were actually happy. It was a really pleasant life, even though you were this village water carrier. I mean, it seems like I didn't do much, but it was a good life. And so Fast forward, I had that experience and I remember feeling like, wow, I mean, it was cool that I saw this life, but still I was struggling with, I wanted something more exciting. 
And so a few years later, I had a very exciting reading. This is, to this day, the most profound reading I have ever had in my life. And I've had a lot of readings through a lot of different modalities and practitioners. This particular reading was called an Akashic Records reading, and it was done by this amazing woman, Renee Rowe. I hope to have her on the podcast because she so impacted my life. And then, of course, as I do after I had this life-changing reading, I made sure that all of my family members and all of my friends got sessions with her. Since I had my reading, I think I've referred maybe 10 plus people to her. I mean, that's how much of an impact she had on me and how much I love to spread the stuff that has impacted me, hence this podcast. So when I had my reading with Renee, she explained to me on a deeper level what the Akashic Records is, because that is a whole other topic that I will have to get into in other episodes. But in an attempt to explain something extremely complex and esoteric, The Akashic Records are almost like the database, this vault of all of the information and data ever created by the souls of the world. Granted, I know that sounds absolutely crazy, so please, after this, look up Akashic Records or go to YouTube and try to find a video, but the Akashic Records is a place that... People that are kind of like psychics can tap into to gain information about a particular soul's experience in past lives and in this one, about a particular soul's purpose, about why they have the struggles that they do in this life. What is it meant to teach them? What are they learning? You can truly access so much information from the Akashic Records. You can also access information about souls at large. So if you're not interested in your soul or the soul of a friend or family member, you can access information about where humanity is at this point in time. Why are we enduring these hardships and these challenges and going through this time of upheaval and change that we are? So there's a lot of information that can be accessed through the Akashic Records. I know that we can also learn to access our own, which is something I definitely plan on doing, but I will have to save that for another time because I'm already doing a lot of different things. But anyway, I had this Akashic Records reading and when I got off the call with her, it was a Zoom call. I actually took pictures. Maybe I should post these somewhere. I took a few selfies because I was sobbing such tears of joy that I felt like I was I was home in myself. My soul had come back home. And at that particular time in my life, I was feeling really lost because I had just finished teaching my signature six-week wellness and spirituality course that I had called Chrysalis to Catalyst. And I'd had 12 amazing students. It went really well. But when I finished the course, I kind of hit a rock bottom of what do I want to do next? I don't know if I want to just keep relaunching that. But also that took nine months of extremely hard work. Now that I'm done, now what? And so I had gotten this reading with her to gain a little bit of clarity about my purpose and my path and why I'm here. And I'd also just had a really difficult friend breakup at that point in time. And so I was able to ask about that and why did that happen? What could I hear about this person's soul and mine? What were kind of our karmic relationships? And Truly, that reading was profound on so many levels. Throughout the entire reading, it felt as if I was remembering something that I had merely forgotten, that I hadn't had the words to remember these experiences, but they were deeply a part of me. And it was in that reading, not only did she give me some clarity on my purpose and my path, which is hilarious because this reading was back in 2021 and it's all continuing to unfold as I sit here in this podcast chair right now. But she told me about so many of my past lives. She told me little snippets here and there 
just the ones that I needed to hear about and I was able to connect a lot of themes in my life and from past lifetime X I was able to know that wow this particular behavioral pattern comes very naturally to me but in this lifetime it's time to step into this other role. I also learned about some of my past lives with Cal my husband and that was probably the sweetest part because this woman, Renee, only knew my first name when I signed up. She didn't know about Cal or our relationship. At that time, he was my fiance. We were engaged, not yet married. And I remember asking her, I said, I have a partner. What can you tell me about my relationship with this partner? Have we lived any lives together? And she burst into this huge smile and she said, oh my goodness, I'm seeing so many lives together. But she said, as I can see these visualizations from your past lives with your partner, I'm also hearing the words from your spirit guides saying, man, it's about time. You two have been best friends in so many lifetimes but you've never crossed into that romantic relationship realm. And they're saying, thank goodness you finally have. You guys are so good together. And keep in mind, she did not know that Cal and I had been best friends in this life for three years, completely platonic best friends. And then you've probably heard the story, but we both decided that we were in love with each other. We decided we wanted to marry each other. And then we thought, okay, maybe we should date first. And then that started the whole love story. But she did not know that we came from a best friendship. And to this day, even being married at this point for almost two years, having been together romantically for almost six years, being friends for three years before that, he is still just my best friend. Yes, of course, he's my husband. But He's just my greatest pal. And the fact that she could even see that we had that kind of relationship in every life. She even told me about this lifetime where we were in England. Probably, she said, it could have been anywhere from like 15 to 1800s because she could see I was wearing a corset. I was still a woman. He was a male. And because that was a time in history when it was not really okay for men and women to be friends with each other, we would meet in secret late at night. We would meet at pubs and things like that and kind of in alleyways just because we were such good friends. And she actually said that in so many of these lifetimes, Cal loved me and he wanted to be with me, but I was focused on other things. In fact, in many of these lifetimes, I gave up everything. I went without marriage, children for my craft that I, my soul has always dedicated myself so fully to my work, to my craft, almost in a spiritual sense, like it is this God sent purpose and mission. And it's funny because I very much resonate with that in this life too. I take what I do so seriously like it is this God sent mission or purpose. And so she was seeing all this and she said, he's been waiting for you for centuries. And your spirit guides, your angels, your ancestors are so glad that you're finally together romantically in this lifetime. And I remember after that session, I ran downstairs where Cal was and I was crying and I just said, I'm so sorry. I made you wait so long. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. And so (laughs) it was a sweet moment. And he was like, oh, God, you're going to hold this over me for the rest of our life together, aren't you? And I said, absolutely. So anyway, I got so much out of that reading. I could share a million and one lifetimes, but just know that... It was incredibly profound. I heard about the lifetimes I was meant to hear about. For example, a few that resonated with me other than my lifetimes with Cal. In one lifetime, I was this medicine man in Greece and the whole community knew me and would come to me for my kind of wise healing advice. I was very much this medical wellness and spiritual teacher 
And as she said that, I was like, "Uh uh-huh. In another lifetime, I was a singer, but not just any singer. She said I was, I sang in such a spiritual way that I would bring people to their hearts. I had this angelic voice and I had this way of expressing it that would bring people into some sort of spiritual experience. And as I was hearing that, I said, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. So she said, you have this performer in you, you know, loving to have an audience, a community, and bringing people to their hearts, reminding them of what really matters. And then in another life, I was a Himalayan monk that was meditating in caves. And she said, even in that lifetime, I had the most restless mind that I was always pissed with myself. Like, calm down. I'm trying to meditate here. And that just made me laugh. Like, uh, even as a monk, I could not quiet this stuff in my head. So There were a lot of lifetimes I learned about. I learned about lifetimes with my family members. It was so moving in so many ways. And I've wanted to do one since, but I haven't really needed to. I mean, if I could, I would do one weekly and hear more and more and more. But I try to limit myself because I could go a little crazy with that. And then this weekend, I heard that there was going to be a past life regression at one of my favorite yoga studios ever that's in Capitola, California, about an hour south of me. It's called Breath and Oneness. And they have really amazing events. And this particular event was an hour and a half past life regression with this incredible healer woman who is a student of shamanic medicine. And her name is Samira. So I said to Cal, Cal, are you down for this past life regression? And he said, sounds great. So we went to this past life regression and she explained a lot of the same things that I had already heard. Things about hypnotherapy and how a regression is simply being in a relaxed state where she can ask you questions and kind of visually guide you in a way that your subconscious lets down its barriers and you can finally access those memories, thoughts, and beliefs that have been hidden or locked away for so long. And so we all laid down got really comfortable, and she started guiding us. So the first, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes was just relaxation, you know, melting into the earth and releasing tension from any part of our body that's holding on to it, all of that, taking deep breaths and relaxing as we exhale longer than we inhale. And eventually, she had us visually guide ourselves into a garden, And it's so funny because afterwards when we were sharing, you could tell that everyone's garden was so different too. My garden was very tropical. I had these massive monstera leaves and pink flowers and there were birds chirping everywhere. It was so full of life. It was just humming with life force vitality. And eventually after spending a little bit of time in our gardens, we were guided to a door. And everyone's door was so different. My door was this precious white wooden arched door with just a metal knob. I love arched doorways. I feel like they look very hobbit-like, cottage-like. I find them adorable. And so I just found it so funny that the second she said, and then there's a door there, I instantly had this white wooden arched door in my mind. So we're guided towards the door And after a little bit more relaxation, we were finally guided to open the door and enter into a life that would in some way be illuminating for us in this lifetime. And the second I opened the door, it was as if I stepped into Jumanji, the movie. It was this thick, fertile, humid forest, this jungle, this rainforest. And I instantly knew I was in the Amazon, which... I've never been to the Amazon. I mean, I've seen pictures, but that's as far as it goes. But I knew I was in the Amazon and I was looking around at all of the vines and the sounds of the animals and the massive trees in the rainforest. And as I'm looking around, I'm asking myself, okay, I'm in the Amazon. Where am I? And I knew I was in Peru. And what's so funny about that, you guys, is that I know the Amazon is in South America, but I 
wasn't sure if the Amazon went into Peru. And so last night after the regression, I Googled in what South American countries does the Amazon lie? And Peru is actually the country with the second most surface area of Amazon rainforest right after Brazil. So I did not even know that the Amazon was in Peru. But in this lifetime, when I step into this Jumanji jungle, this rainforest, I instantly knew I'm in the Amazon and I'm in Peru. And she's then guiding us to, you know, take in our environment, look around, what do you see? And then to start to see ourselves if we can. And at first I couldn't see myself. And I'm thinking, okay, where am I? Where am I? Who am I in this life? And the first thing I see is this long black braid down my back. And I thought, there I am. And I'm running through the forest. I'm running through the jungle with this free spirit. I'm loving to explore. I'm probably a a woman of about 13, 14, teenage girl, wearing this simple brown dress, this tunic dress, and these little brown like moccasin-like shoes. And I could just feel how connected I was to the jungle. As I was exploring, I could tell that I was a deeply spiritual person, that I could sense almost the spirits in the forest around me, in the nature. I felt this deep, deep connection. And so I had this scene where I'm kind of just playing around, jumping around the vines, the trees, and the jungle. And then Samira, our practitioner, guided us to go forward in time to a moment in our lives that held some sort of meaning. And instantly, I could see my black, wavy hair that had come out of a braid falling on either side of my face as I'm crouching barefoot in front of a river. And I'm dunking my newborn son into the water. My son is, I mean, probably a few days old. And he's wrapped in this brown fabric. I don't know if it was fabric or if it was deer skin. Maybe that's what I was wearing too. And I'm dunking him clearly in some sort of spiritual or ritual ceremony. And I'm all alone with my son. I don't know where his father is. I don't know if I have any other family or friends. And I don't think I necessarily did because when I was looking into my son's face, I truly felt the love of a mother. I looked at my son beaming at him thinking, it's just you and me, just you and me against the world. My son was my everything and he was all I had. And so I'm dunking him in some sort of spiritual ceremony. And I could tell it wasn't Christian. It wasn't a baptism. It was something to do with almost the spirits in the water. And it felt like all I had in that life was my spiritual beliefs. Again, I was deeply connected to nature and my son. But other than that, I was alone. That was my life. And so after that scene where I'm dunking my newborn son, we're guided forward in life to another moment of importance. And at that point, my son is grown. He's a teenage boy and he's dressed as a warrior and he's going off. I have to send him away and I'm hugging him and crying. But I could tell that I was so selfless in that life. I felt like the archetype of the mother, almost like the book, The Giving Tree, if you've ever read that. Where in the book, The Giving Tree, it's about this tree that gives all she has to this young boy who grows up to be an old man. And she gives and gives and gives, you know, her trunk, her apples, her everything until she has nothing but a stump. And she's very rarely given a pat on the back or a thank you. And The Giving Tree really does represent the mother archetype. And in this life... I was such a mother. I felt grief as I was saying goodbye to my son, knowing that I would be left alone and he would go off into the world. And once again, it would just be me all alone in my rainforest with my spiritual connections. That's all that I would have. So I said goodbye to him, feeling that true grief. And then we were guided to later in our lives, essentially our death scene. And I was just laying in a bed, my deathbed, with my son, his wife, and their two children right by my side. 
they had a toddler at that point and a young child, a young baby that he was holding on his hip. And they were saying goodbye to me. I had this long, wavy white hair and I was leaving. And then I remember leaving my body and being pulled upwards through this white light. It was this white, shimmering, glimmering light. And when I finally got up through the light, I entered into what felt like sunshine heaven, sunrise heaven. It was all yellow, golden, orange light. And it felt so warm and welcoming and loving. And suddenly I wasn't alone anymore because I looked around and there were so many other beings there. And specifically, the one that was welcoming me was what appeared to be the Hierophant in the tarot deck, which is the great spiritual teacher, which is a card that I have pulled numerous times for myself, symbolizing that I have that within me. And for whatever reason, it looked like this Hierophant archetype man was welcoming me home. And I knew that I was home. I was back with my spiritual beings where I feel most comfortable. And again, I wasn't so alone anymore. And so it was a really like sweet, poignant, wholesome, sad life. And at the end of the regression, I had that same experience I did with the first regression that I'd had back in 2019, where I felt like wow, that's what I was shown. I'm, I'm waiting for the big stuff here, the big trauma and the karmic moments. But I kept being shown these simple lives where I could maybe see some of what is in me today back in me in those lives. And I actually asked the facilitator, I said, forgive me if this is disrespectful, but This is now my second time doing a regression and I've really been setting the intention to see things that will help me heal things in this life, heal limiting beliefs, heal just different emotional wounds I have. And I said, I'm seeing a lot of simple mundane lives. And she looked at me and she said, do you fear living a small life? And I said, absolutely. And she just smiled. And I knew there was some sort of message in this that I was happy enough living this small life, but also in that life where I was this Peruvian woman in the rainforest, I was so lonely. I mean, I felt this deep love and connection to both the nature around me and my son, but I really had no community. And as I even mentioned earlier in this podcast, that's something that I often struggle with. And I've been told in past readings that that could be something I struggle with my whole life, that I very much am playing the role of kind of a facilitator, teacher, guide in this lifetime. And when you are in that role, sometimes it's hard to be just one of the crowd. That's just not the role that I play comfortably and that, yes, I can help to build community, but that I'll always more or less play this role. And it can be very lonely, especially when you're on a spiritual path where you mention tarot cards or past lives and people just bat their eyes at you like, okay, Miss Insane. (laughs) So it was interesting that I was seeing that same loneliness in myself in another life And yet still, I had that deep grounded connection in my spiritual beliefs and in my connection to nature. And that that, along with my love for my son, was what kept me grounded and whole and pure. So that was a really beautiful, beautiful experience. And before I wrap up this episode, I wanted to read one small thing from my journal I forgot to mention this earlier, but this is what I had written in my journal after my Akashic Records reading a few years ago when I had been told the lifetimes with Cal, some of my lifetimes as the medicine man, the monk, the singer, the performer, and this is what I wrote afterwards. So my journal is dated August 24th, 2021. I just had an Akashic Records reading and it was honestly the coolest thing I've ever done. It felt like coming home to myself by meeting other versions of who I used to be, 
almost like friends I remember meeting at some point in the past. It's so hard to explain, but it felt like confirmation for all I know to be true. Being a healer, a singer, a monk, a close friend of Cal, an English woman, a Parisian, a Greek. Being eternally dedicated to my craft, almost like a Mother Teresa type. Having an audience and a community, moving people in a spiritual way that brings them back home to their hearts. Being newer to earth, as Renee said, I was off being a light etheric being for many, many years. So now I want to learn and do and experience and accomplish everything now that I'm new to earth. Having a hard time believing in myself and feeling like I'm enough. Being eternally, fiercely independent. Being a speaker and a teacher and a healer and a community leader. Being an intuitive. Coming here to have an impact on humanity and to speak on global stages to help people make healthier, more spiritual choices for themselves. Being a learner having a busy mind, I resonate with all of it. Hearing it all and sitting with it makes me laugh and cry at the same time. It truly feels like, hello, old friend. I've always known you. I just forgot your name. End of my journal entry. Or at least after that, I ended up just reiterating some of what Renee had told me in the reading so I wouldn't forget. So I just wanted to give you a small taste of my personal experiences. I say these are my personal experiences because this is just one tiny slice of the full pie. There are so many truths and ways of seeing the world out there and I'm constantly searching and finding the ones that resonate the most with me as truth. And I want you to do that for yourself too. If this doesn't resonate as truth, that's okay. Find your own truth. But this for me feels like home and comfort and like truth. So I definitely am not done having these experiences. In fact, I would love to do another Akashic Records reading and even learn how to read the Akashic Records. I have a book that I got for Christmas that I cannot wait to read that is called How to Read the Akashic Records. It has been recommended to me so many times throughout the years. So I'll definitely do that. I also plan on having both Renee, the Akashic Records reader, and Samira, the past life regressionist, on the podcast so that they can share their own trainings and experiences and beliefs. And I think it would be a lot of fun. I would learn a lot and hopefully you would learn a lot as well. One last thing I will recommend before I close out is a Netflix docu-series called Surviving Death. I watched it a few years ago with my family and even though I already held a lot of these beliefs, I think it helped to introduce these ideas to my parents in some new ways as well and it just opened up a lot of really deep and beautiful discussion. In the docu-series, there are six episodes and they talk about everything from near-death experiences, mediumship, seeing dead people, signs from the dead, and then lastly, reincarnation. And they have some really cool experiences with children who remember past lives. So I hope that piqued your interest. I loved the show, especially episode six about the past lives. So if you either watch the show or end up reading Many Lives, Many Masters, or another Brian Weiss book, please do let me know. I am all ears, and I'm really curious to hear about your experience. So with all of that magic having been laid out from my mouth to your ears, I want to wrap up here. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review wherever you get your podcast, the Spotify app, Apple Podcasts, you name it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Devin Rochelle Hine, and... Please share this episode with a friend or family member that you think might enjoy it. If you yourself are really interested in these topics and you have a total skeptic in your life, please send it their way. Or if you are a total skeptic and you happen to know a family member or friend that loves these topics, share it with them and maybe just say, thinking of you, I really enjoyed this and I think you might too. So my friends, That is it for today. I hope you took some nugget of inspiration or 
knowledge or open-mindedness away from this. I cannot wait to see you again next week. Okay. (laughs) Bye for now.